What village in Scotland is home to a medieval castle that was occupied by the Jacobites, Mary Queen of Scots and the uncrowned King of Scotland? It's Dune of course. Hi and welcome to Celtic History Decoded. I'm Stephen. Today I've taken you to Dune Castle. In Scottish Gaelic, Dune means the fort. It is just north of Stirling and is on the banks of the River Teeth. Dune Castle has featured in Outlander, Monty Python's Holy Grail, and perhaps most famously as Winterfell in Game of Thrones, as the home of the House of Stark. Mary Queen of Scots stayed at Dune Castle numerous times during her reign in the 16th century. Dune Castle was also occupied by Bonnie Prince Charlie, or Charles Edward Stuart, during the 1745 Jacobite Rising. The Jacobites used the castle as a prison for government troops who were captured during the Battle of Falkirk Muir in 1746, which was a Jacobite victory. Some of the prisoners escaped by tying bedsheets together and climbing down the windows of the castle. One of the prisoners who escaped was John Witherspoon, who went on to sign the US Declaration of Independence in 1776. An early version of the castle was built in the 13th century, but was probably damaged during the First Scottish War of Independence. It was rebuilt in close to its present form in the 14th century by Robert Stuart, known as the Duke of Albany. The story of Robert Stuart is a story that you would expect in Game of Thrones. It is a story full of power, rivalry and murder. A Machiavellian politician with a thirst for power, he is often referred to as the uncrowned King of Scotland. This is because during the reign of his brother Robert III, known as a weak king physically and mentally, Robert Stuart pulled the levers of power behind the scenes. Robert Stuart, or the Duke of Albany, was from a powerful Scottish royal family. His father was Robert II, the King of Scotland in the 14th century. Robert Stuart initiated a sting operation that led to the imprisonment and eventual death of his nephew, David Stuart known as the Duke of Rothsey, who was the son of Robert III. As Robert III's health continued to deteriorate, a power struggle broke out between uncle and nephew, between Robert Stuart and David Stuart. This ultimately led to Robert Stuart colluding with Archibald Douglas, a Scottish nobleman and warlord, who arranged for David Stuart to be arrested on trumped-up charges. In 1402, David Stewart was arrested and imprisoned in Albany's Falkland Palace in Fife, and David Stewart soon died. The official cause of death was starvation, but rumours that he was murdered have prevailed to today. After suspicion and inquiry at the time, Robert Stewart and Archibald Douglas were both acquitted by Robert III, the King of Scotland at the time. Robert III went so far as to ban any malicious rumours about any suspicion of murder. Robert Stuart went on to exert power and influence even after Robert III died in 1406. Robert III was succeeded by James I of Scotland, who spent the majority of his initial reign in exile in England. This left Robert Stuart the ability to exert influence in Scotland up until his death in 1420. Robert Stuart's property and estates were taken over by his son, Murdoch Stuart, after Robert's death. When James I returned to Scotland, however, in 1425, Murdoch Stuart was convicted of treason, along with his two sons, and they were executed. Dune was also home to a Roman fort in the first century AD, thought to have been built during Agricola's campaigns north in around 79 or starting around 79 AD. Remains of bread ovens and some sort of hospital have been found, and this was potentially a defensive garrison position established by the Romans as they were pushing north further into Caledonia. There are little remains today of this fort. As we have seen, there is much more to Dune Castle than what you would expect. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell, and if you want to support my work, there'll be ways to do so in the links in the description below. Thank you, speak to you soon.